I can see that what we're going to have tonight is a building conversation, and that's the way it should be. I think in order to get things done, you have to find the common ground, you have to find the initiatives, as Diane said, that you can get behind and support and then figure out a way to move, move things forward. And there is a sense of urgency. I mean, when I saw those pictures, I thought of my grandkids as well. Um, but I also thought of where we've come in a very short period of time. 1988, I was, I'd been married for 10 years already. Um, you start thinking of milestones in your life and really things are happening quickly. I was up in the Arctic this summer. I went up to our climate change research center up on Ellesmere Island and talked to the scientists that have been up there for 30 years and what they've seen in the last 10 years or so. And the permafrost melting and the pockets that that was leaving, the glaciers retreating and the silt that was getting into the, into the sea and what that did to marine life, uh, animals and, 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 and uh, uh, on the sea or in the sea or animals on land that they used to see more of that they don't see as many of anymore. And what that does, it was farther north than indigenous people, but what that does to indigenous people and the conversation that we're having with what we're doing to their land, whether it's the Inuit, the Métis or, or First Nations or, or unaffiliated indigenous people that have the right to the land that we're, we're destroying. I've worked on boiled water advisories. Um, I work on projects. That's what I love, I would look for. And uh, Jane Philpott asked if anybody could help with boiled water. And I've done a lot of work in First Nations putting generators in back in the early 80s. And so I know what it's like to fly into a place and the bush plane takes off and then you're with the community working together to solve problems. And now what can we do to get clean water to everybody that deserves clean water, which is everybody. And we've made some progress. In some short period of time, we've made some significant progress because we're focusing our time and the resources. But more importantly, we're listening to them. We're listening to the elders about where do you put wastewater? What do you need to do to protect their source water? And how do we work together to provide those solutions? So those conversations, and some of them I'm having with people I've known now for, yikes, 40 years, um, and they're still around, and they remember me flying into the bush camp 40 years ago. So they have memories, and they have a lot of bad memories. And they have bad memories from INAC. They've had bad memories of, of a lot of the things that they've had to go through. And now we're trying to change that. So, and that's not easy. I mean, we can, I mean, obviously we need to protest, we need to do the things to raise awareness, but at the end of the day, we need to have conversations that are productive, that we can work together to solve some problems. So I've looked at the project of climate change in Canada, and I've, I've gone to the, par parliament of, uh, the, the Library of Parliament, and I've said, by province, I want GHC emissions. I'd like to see it by sector. And they've given me those reports. Um, we've got a report now on that's really close to what we worked on in Guelph when we were developing the first community energy plan. And it looks at how much GHG emission by types of activity. So from buildings, how much come from buildings, from transportation, from agriculture, food and waste, how much GHG, uh, GHG comes from industry. And then drilling into that, where can we find projects to to reduce by industry and really work on industry-specific solutions. And so I've looked through my notes, and I won't read them all. You don't need the numbers right now, but if you have questions, I've got them. I've got some answers that um, we've invested in the uh, Errol Food Institute and in looking at providing sustainable food for the world out of the University of Guelph. And we've invested in the car of the future I also co-chair the Automotive Caucus, and so working with, with the automotive manufacturers as well as Linamar and others that are developing the car of the future to go from 80% internal combustion motor design to 20% in the next five years. So they're going to be ahead of government, which is great, and we need to provide the tools for them to do that. 
So solving these problems, it's going to be complex, but I think really to get to the point of productive conversations, which I'm hoping we'll have tonight, these are really productive for me to hear what people have to say, to hear Diane and Mike and Cam and I work together. We had a great meeting last week looking at some of the issues that, are, that we're jointly facing. Then we go back to our perspective areas that we try and work with city council in Cam's case, or Mike is trying to get the attention of a government that doesn't want attention on this problem, and so he's got a challenge that we have to help him with. And so working together, university, business, government, and researchers to make a better world. Thanks, Lloyd.